you're gonna break in two. Talking Boxing with Billy C. It began as a podcast, went live on the net, and transformed into a full-blown empire across the web, on Fight Now TV, and on radio stations around the world. It's the only daily boxing talk radio show on the planet, hosted by the only guy with the balls to do it. Many have stepped into the ring. Many have tried to take the belt. And one by one, they fall. Right. Another victim of the undisputed heavyweight champion of Boxing Talk Radio. Talking Boxing with Billy C is on now. My style is impetuous, my defense is impregnable, and I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. And we're coming to you live from the Billy C. Studio in Lake George, New York. I'm Bill Caligero, and it's time for Talking Boxing with Billy C. Good morning, good day, good evening. Whenever you're listening, hope you're doing all right. Got a busy show schedule for you today. But first, this show is being brought to you in part by Cats Nationwide Luxury Transportation Service. If you're looking for a limo, and you're someplace in the United States or even Canada, then you need to give my girl Cat a call, 202-351-7496, as I can get a hold of her. And uh, just remember, if you're looking for a limo with a real hot driver, <laughs> you got to call Cat, 202-351-7496. Tell her Billy C sent you. But just remember, she's my girl. Cat's Nationwide Luxury Transportation Service, 202-351-7496. The show is also being brought to you in part by Kemp and Aaron Tomkovich, if you're looking for a lawyer, use the ones that keep my ass out of trouble. That is Kemp and Aaron Tomkovich, 845-221-4099. That's 845-221-4099. Let Kemp and Aaron Tomkovich knock out your legal problem. 845-221-4099. The show is also being brought to you in part by the Halftime Bar and Grill Route 9. South Glens Falls, you know, New York. Check them out. Always got great people hanging there. Always got great food there. And drink specials. <laughs> Why else? I mean, three good reasons to go there. Oh, I'll give you another one. There's live entertainment on uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Mondays. Friday and Saturday, you usually get some musical entertainment. Or me. I'm there uh, doing the Friday night fights. And then uh, Sunday, Monday, they got... Uh, <clears throat> Beach Volleyball with the Goyles. 
That's right. They got the girls' bo- volleyball, beach volleyball league going on at the halftime. So if you like to uh, watch volleyball and uh, maybe the girls bouncing around in bikinis, uh, swing by the halftime bar and grill. 518-792-4869 for info. That's 518-792-4869. Don't forget, if you like wings, and if you're a man or woman enough, ask Craig to make the Billy C. Hot Sauce. Then let me know what you think. Halftime Bar and Grill, 518-792-4869. Tell them Billy C. sent you. And uh, also, the show is being brought to in part by the Whitehall Athletic Club. If you're looking to join a uh, high-class club and you want an athletic black background, then, uh, hey, backdrop, I should say. Then uh, check out the Whitehall Athletic Club, www.whitehallathleticclub.com. And uh, part of your membership gives you full access, front row seats to all the live entertainment, including the big pro boxing event we got going on on uh, next Friday, uh, August 24th. Chevelle Fist to Steel Halback against Victoria Cisneros in the main event for the World Junior Welterweight title. For ticket information, visit their website, www.whitehallathleticclub.com, or uh, give a call, 518-832-3663. That's 518-832-3663. And uh, tell them Billy C. sent you, you want the discount. Yeah, yeah. Always tell people you want the discount, damn it. Amy Green is coming up in a little while. Give uh, her thoughts on some stuff that's going on. Um, Got to kick off the show with some bad news, some sad bad news. Actually, uh, Dax Khan had uh, broken this story. Um, before anyone else, unfortunately, I didn't uh, look at our private. We got like, you know, you've heard of the bat, bat line. It's like, uh, it's called the Dax line, you know, the Dax line. And uh, Dax is, uh, uh, you know, inside scoop, uh, what's happening around the world of boxing. Uh, I missed this one yesterday, otherwise I would have said it. But uh, a former uh, world heavyweight champion, Michael Dokes, passed away. Uh, we lost another one. Uh, Michael Dynamite Dokes, Dynamite Dokes was only uh, uh, 54 years old. And uh, he had uh, just turned 54 uh, two days before uh, uh, he left us. Uh, complications due to liver cancer is what uh, knocked out uh, Michael Dokes. Our thoughts, prayers, and condolences uh, go out to the uh, family and friends of former uh, heavyweight champion Michael Dokes. And uh, he, was a, he was a fun guy to watch fight, that's for sure. So, um, speaking of Dax Khan, he's got a, a new uh, article up on uh, uh, up on the uh, BillyCBoxing.com website. Uh, it's part two of the Gabrielle Ruales story, and uh, this is getting right from uh, Gabrielle's uh, mouth. Yeah, 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 right from his, his own his own words. Now, there's been a lot of controversy surrounding him uh, and a book that was just recently released. Um, uh, some things are coming out that maybe wasn't true. Maybe the author, uh, uh, you know, enhanced some stuff, uh, maybe, uh, did some things and said some things that, uh, Gabe didn't say himself. Uh, but Dax has, uh, been in constant contact with Rui Alice and, uh, he's been, uh, uh, discussing his life and, uh, where, you know, what's going on now and all that happy stuff. So catch, uh, the second part of his series, the first part is under his column, but you can't miss it. It's right up on uh, BillyCBoxing.com right now. Uh, or you can always go into Dax Khan's column, which is right on the right-hand side. And speaking of BillyCBoxing.com, I told you guys I called the fight last week. It was a week ago uh, Saturday uh, when uh, Grady Brewer uh, was uh, – uh, he won the, the IBO's Intercontinental Junior Middleweight title via a disqualification – against Gio Boris, Gio Boris Bartholomew, Gio Boris Bartholomew. I said it right tonight. I've called the action. Uh, why? Because he got bitten in the neck by Bartholomew. Uh, he was like, hey, blah, 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 blah. I need to suck you, blah. <laughs> it wasn't anything like that. But check it out. The whole fight, uh, all five rounds are up on uh, BillyCBoxing.com. Now, right now, you can check it out. Right on the front page, it says, uh, check out the bite. <laughs> um, you could also look, uh, there's a section on BillyCBoxing.com. One of the uh, uh, banners to the right of the screen says Wednesday Night Fights. If you click that, uh, you, will, uh, you will also get it too. So um, it's going to be up there for a while. Uh, you got me and my man Cesar Hernandez, 
who at the very last minute, and I do mean last minute, uh, stepped in and did the color commentating with us. And uh, you got to check it out. Um, it's uh, We did a, a good job, but b- better than that. The fight was uh, was pretty entertaining. Um, it started off a little slow, and then this is just a, another uh, uh, reason why uh, we've lost <laughs> uh, we've lost people uh, in this sport. You know, he just bites him in the neck, and we got it all on uh, uh, on tape, and uh, you can watch it right now on BillyCBoxing dot com. Um, like we do every day, we read the mailbag. Well, we pull the ma- I don't know why I can't freaking get that the way I want to say it. We pull the emails from the mailbag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we do. You know. Uh, today we're going to start off with one that came from uh, uh, my man uh, Pedros9. He says, uh, uh, I love that song uh, in the beginning of the show. Now, he's referring to one I've pl- been playing this week. He says, uh, what's the name and who sings it? The name of the song is, uh, is called uh, Crazy Love, and it's written and sung by Low Society, a great blues band. I love this couple. It's uh, uh, obviously a female lean singer. And uh, uh, we, uh, we got turned on to Low Society by, there was a, uh, a few months back, uh, half a year ago, whatever, uh, we were doing some stuff with radiosubmit.com, and uh, all these bands started sending me music that they wanted me to play. So I started playing a little bit here and there, and uh, this was one of them. And, you know, over time, I, I just couldn't, quite honestly, there was some of the stuff I wouldn't even play. But, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I was, you know, featuring a different artist every week. And then uh, uh, it kind of, you know, some of the music that I was getting submitted just didn't fit right with this show. But the blues and the, and the stuff like the crab cakes, I mean, that gets you going. It gets us going here in the morning. Uh, so we uh, we decided to play it. And, and crab cakes... You know, YouTube, we we do the replay on YouTube every day. And YouTube has become nothing but a hassle for us. You know, uh, between people, you know, not wanting to, uh, you know, spend more than three to five minutes uh, watching a video and don't understand it. Either they don't have the capacity, the brain capacity to figure out that this is a show. You know, just don't listen to it. Or like uh, a lot of listeners said, fast forward. Pass whatever you don't like, fast forward it. You know, um, but they haven't figured that one out yet. But the other thing is, is that because YouTube has so many videos on it, they have licensing stuff, right? And the name of that song, the Crab Cake song, is somebody else's. It's, the, it's within the name of somebody else's song. So every friggin' day, I get a letter, an email from YouTube that says, your song might be uh, licensed by someone else. And it's a different band, different song, different everything. And then I have to go through the whole procedure of disputing it, saying, no, that's not the song. This is the song. Here's the artist. Go check it out. And then they release it. But it's been just crazy every day. Every day I got to do it. And, uh, you know, as much as I like crab cakes, I'm getting sick of doing it. I just don't have the time anymore. I'm speaking of time. It's time for one of these. If you're in upstate New York and you need a trucking company, then you need Roselli Enterprises. Roselli Enterprises is trucking at its finest. They have it all. Dump trucks, dump trailers, walking floors, flatbeds, flow boys, tankers, loaders, and a full line of roll-off containers for any job, big or small. Roselli Enterprises is also the source for all your sand, gravel, and topsoil needs. Visit them on the web at RoselliTrucking.com or call 315-433-5115. That's 315-433-5115 and tell them Billy C. Are you ready, America? Then let's get it on with Fight Now TV. It's time, fight fans. Your channel has arrived. All the fights, all the names, all the action. From world-class boxing events to mixed martial arts showdowns and other combat sports matchups, Fight Now TV delivers the hits and more. Call your television provider and tell them you want to get it on with Fight Now TV. For more details, go to fightnow.com. We've got a great matchup tonight. Fighting out of the left corner is the number one ranked contender. No, he is not. I'm sorry, but who are you? I am the IDO computer. I am programmed to provide only fair and unbiased boxing rankings. This fighter is the number 15 ranked contender. Fair and unbiased boxing rankings? That's a new concept. Actually, it is not. The IDO has provided unbiased computerized rankings for many years. Well, we've still got a great fight tonight, folks. In the left corner is the number 15 ranked contender. The IBO, the champion of integrity. Learn more at IBOboxing.com. Check out BillyCBoxing.com now. 
or feel the wrath of the mighty mustache. Oh, that hurts. Why are you doing that to my face? I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> That's BillyCBoxing.com. Consider this your warning. As a young boy, all Billy C. dreamed about was one day having his own catchphrase. And we're back. And we're back. One boy. One dream. One day. Everyone will say. And we're back. 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 Catchphrase, coming soon to a theater near you. And we're back. You're listening to the Talking Box with Billy C. Show. You know, his ears must be ringing. Because I just mentioned Caesar, and was saying uh, what a great, uh, what a great job he did uh, on the uh, on the color commentating for our uh, Bartholomew uh, biting Grady Brewer fight, which is now available on BillyCBoxing dot com. And uh, guess what? He just popped into the chat room. What's up, Caesar, my man? And uh, I guess he doesn't realize that uh, that's me in there. That's me and there, Caesar. He knows. He knows. But I was saying uh, a little earlier before he popped in, he missed it. I'll say it again because, you know, he likes to, he wants me to hear him uh, say how great of a job he did. But he did do a great job. And it's there for you guys to check out. You too, Caesar, if you haven't seen the replay of it. Uh, it's right on BillyCBoxing.com. We got uh, Grady Brewer winning the IBO Intercontinental Junior Middleweight title. Uh, and uh, Caesar and myself called the action live. From uh, the uh, <laughs> Atlanta, let's just say from Atlanta, and uh, we get to see the uh, the bite. We get to see the bite. We get to see Caesar say he bit him. He bit him. He, he just bit him. So uh, so check it out. But uh, anyway, uh, we're in the uh, mailbag with the emails, and uh, given quality says uh, unfortunately, uh, and this is. Uh, this was from yesterday's show. He says, unfortunately, all this does is give the green light for more fighters to take some juice. Lamont lied. Uh, I'm sorry. Lamont Lymont. <laughs> Given quality, always uh, has these subtle little uh, messages he sends to me. So instead of uh, Lamont, it's Lymont. Lymont did uh, uh, under the IBF rules and did get a clear screening. Uh, there are natural ways to increase your testosterone levels these fighters should do it the right way instead of through scientific enhancements um you know I, I, you're gonna hear me take some beatings here <laughs> um and given quality was kind he his, his actually is the kindest one i got um this is uh in response to my thoughts on the ibf i i think you guys misunderstood my point however um i'm going to uh I'm going to take the criticism uh, like a man because, uh, uh, you know, if if at all I, I came across as, as saying that, number one, um, I agree with uh, the procedures and, and policies of, of the IVF and, and some of the other sanctioned bodies, I, that's not true. Uh, and number two, I certainly never intended for anyone to think that uh, I support uh, in one little bit uh, you know, uh, cheating uh, through uh, uh, performance-enhancing drugs. My, my point yesterday wasn't that I, I support uh, cheating. My, my point was was that, you know, I, it goes back to what I've been saying for a month now. You know, I just don't feel, and, and I'm trying to give the fighters a benefit of the doubt. I'm trying to stick up for the fighters because I, I just don't feel that, you know, the whole industry was educated enough. Uh, about performance enhancing drugs uh and uh and the testing procedures and as a result yes i, I mean given quality is is making a point and you're going to hear some other points in a minute uh where you know there are fighters that very well have been 
you know, could have been uh, taking advantage of the system, them knowing more than me, let's say. I, you know, I don't know much about it, uh, and I never said I did. And, and, you know, there very well could have been people like Lamont Peterson, uh, and, I'm, and I'm just using this because of the, the tone I got from uh, uh, Given Quality's email, that, you know, he could be lying about not knowing um, that he was going to test positive in his case, he came out and said a doctor gave it to me. But then again, why didn't he report it? That is part of the rules. You know, you can only say, uh, you know, I didn't know so many times, you know. Um, but my point yesterday was I, I thought that I was given the IBF credit for trying to educate themselves on the situation and not making a, a decision uh, without uh, trying to find someone that knew more about it than they did. I mean, you know, the WBA made their decision swift. Now, maybe that was a better move. You know, in hindsight, uh, before yesterday's show, maybe it was a better move. But, you know, I, what I thought was uh, a good move by the IBF was the fact that they reached out to someone beyond their offices to get some additional opinions before they made their judgment. And, uh, you know, I, I never once suggested that, uh, um, you know, these fighters be allowed to cheat. Given quality makes a fantastic point here that there are tw plenty of, of natural ways to increase testosterone or anything else for that matter, um, you know, where you don't have to use uh, the magic pills. So uh, thanks for the email, given quality, and thanks for being easy on me because, uh, as you're going to see in a few minutes, uh, uh, some of my other friends weren't so nice. Um, my man Miles uh, comes up. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is uh, uh, actually it says, um, this, this, uh, to tell you the truth, this is a continuation of, uh, of uh, Given Quality. He says, uh, uh, so it seems Pacquiao versus Bradley only did really around 700,000 pay-per-view buys. Uh, that's crazy because Bob Arum was saying 900,000 earlier. Actually, I thought he said more. Didn't he say uh, uh, 1.25 million? Didn't he say that? I thought he said 1.25, uh, but I could be wrong. Um, but uh, but now apparently uh, according to Given Quality the true uh, actual number was seven hundred thousand. Uh, he says uh, uh, this guy's a piece of work. Uh, now it seems like I said before Pacquiao's next fight it's going to be Juan Manuel Marquez to save to salvage the money that they lost from Pacquiao and Timothy Bradley and the controversial decision orchestrated uh, outcome by Bob Arum. You got to love it when the deception and the lies get further exposed. Uh, by the actions, words, and fighting uh, of Aram, Team Pacquiao, and Pacquiao. Um, you know, I, it, unless you know something I don't, I, it hasn't been announced officially yet, given quality, but uh, uh, I, I, if he does that, if they do that move, if they take the Juan Manuel Marquez move over the Timothy Bradley, that doesn't make much sense, really, because the bottom line is that I think that... Um, I think there could be more money made with the Timothy Bradley rematch, honestly. And I think that the demand for the rematch is higher than a fourth fight with Juan Manuel Marquez. Now, the people that want to see Juan Manuel Marquez fight Pacquiao again are the same people that feel that Juan Manuel Marquez won at least uh, two of the previous uh, three fights. Um, you know, I, I believe that there's going to be a fourth fight. But I also believe if it were up to me, and, and I think business-wise it's a good decision, uh, but also, uh, uh, you know, career-wise a, a better decision would be to, to have both of those fighters have their farewell fight against each other. You know, it would still be in demand. That fight is not going to lose interest or its value. The Timothy Bradley fight, you know, if Manny Pacquiao, and, and like given quality is suggesting here, if if Manny Pacquiao um, doesn't fight him now, he's gonna he's gonna have more damage to uh, uh, to what people are thinking about Manny Pacquiao and and Top Rank and Freddie Roach, you know. So um, I, I got to agree. I I think that the fight that has to be made for Pacquiao uh, should be, and if it is gonna be in November, it should be against Timothy Bradley. Uh, then early next year, if they don't you know, do the Mayweather fight, which I don't really care anymore, then go to Juan Manuel Marquez, and then that's going to be it for Manny. Both Manny and Floyd are done. They're, they're not going to stick around. 
There's no reason for them to, especially Floyd. And as far as uh, as far as uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, he's already on his farewell tour. You know, he said that's it, but he'll come back for a Pacquiao fight. But that's it, you know. Now Timothy Bradley, you know, and and this is where given quality is right. Timothy Bradley is being looked upon from Bob Arum as his new cash cow. So if that's the case, if Bob Arum is going to use Timothy Bradley as his new cash cow, then why would he want a rematch with Manny Pacquiao, right? Of course he's going to feed Manny Pacquiao to somebody else. And if Manny loses, then he kicks him to the curb all the, all the, all the, all the more. And, uh, uh, you know, now Timothy Bradley's going to be the great thing. You know, a rematch with Timothy Bradley and Manny Pacquiao is too risky for Bob Arum. Because long term, Manny Pacquiao is only going to do one or two more fights. You know, he needs Timothy Bradley. You know, Timothy Bradley, the guy who beat his other cash cow. Yes, he's got other fighters. But uh, I could see uh, what, uh, what uh, Given Quality is talking about. The fight that Manny's got to fight right now has to be against Timothy Bradley. You know, come on. He's sinking deeper and deeper into the abyss, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Manny Pacquiao. You know, yesterday I talked about uh, Freddie Roach, you know, seemingly not getting any blame. I love Freddie Roach, don't get me wrong. But there's too much, uh, uh, too much, uh, uh, you know, downhill negativity surrounding this guy uh, with all of his fighters. You know, when do you start looking at, at him? You know, I, I mean, you know, we give him credit when his fighters win and then when his fighters lose or when they look bad or when they do some crazy stuff, you know, like Latif Coyote. You know, or 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 uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. decide not to show up to training. You know, we all we always blame the fighter. You know, I was saying that a couple weeks ago. You know, why is it that fighters get praised for giving credit to the team when they win, but the team says the fighter didn't follow the rules, didn't follow the game plan when they lose? You know, hey, you win as a team, you lose as a team. You know, what happened to that? You know, what happened to the, hey, we're going to give credit to the team when we win, and damn it, we're going to take criticism when the, to the whole team when we lose. You know, Freddie Roach, I mean, let's, let's be real. I, I, you know, like I keep saying, I, I respect him and everything else, not to mention he's battling a disease, which, uh, you know, he's stronger than I could. I, I'm sure I couldn't do that, you know, uh, and, and maintain my career. You know, but the bottom line is that when do we start pointing a finger at him? You know, just I just named all these fighters that that he trains that are all on, on their train wrecks, you know. And what's he doing? You know, I mean uh, Manny Pacquiao, you know, number one. You know, Latif Coyote, number two. You know, you know Julio Cesar Chavez doesn't show up for training. Come on, man, come on. Now we blame the fighters. Oh, Julio Cesar Chavez, uh, you know, he was young. He's this, he's that. He's out partying. He's doing this, he's doing that. You know, oh, okay. You know, Latif Coyote, he's a nutcase. He's this, he's that. Oh, okay. You know, Manny Pacquiao, oh, he's got other things on his mind. Uh, you know, uh, he was robbed. He was this, he was that. Oh, okay. What about the, you know, Amir Khan? Oh, yeah, he got knocked out. Oh, well, you know, he, he got caught. He didn't listen to his corner. Oh, okay. Didn't listen to his corner because his corner didn't say anything. This corner hasn't said anything in in months. Freddie Roach hasn't been, uh, you know, let's be real. Let's call a spade a spade. Freddie Roach hasn't been too instructional in the corner for any of these fighters that we're talking about. Not one. Amir Khan for two fights, he didn't say a word. You know, Manny Pacquiao, he just keeps calling him son. You know, I mean, Latif Coyote, they, they have to have an interpreter in there for him. You know, so, I mean, come on, man. You know, when do we start looking at Freddie and say, you know what? You know, just, I hate to say it, you know, uh, I don't want to blame Freddie, but, uh, you know, I mean, look what's going on here. You know, the one common denominator is uh, Freddie Roach and Bob Arum. Are you ready, America? Then let's get it on with Fight Now TV. It's time, fight fans. Your channel has arrived. All the fights, all the names, all the action. From world-class boxing events to mixed martial arts showdowns and other combat sports matchups, Fight Now TV delivers the hits and more. Call your television provider and tell them you want to get it on with Fight Now TV. For more details, go to fightnow.com. Broadcasting in all corners of the globe, on the web and radio. He would scoff at a stretch of that man, I would think.
Sports. You're listening to Talking Boxing with Billy C. From upstate New York in the good old U.S. of A. Boxing is here to stay because we are here to stay. The best two hours of boxing talk on the airwaves. Hey, fight fans. Check out KOFantasyBoxing.com. KO Fantasy Boxing is boxing's only trademarked fantasy game. Check it out, www.kofantasyboxing.com. Select your own gym, your own fighters. Track them through a season that can last from three months to a year, depending upon which league you join. you got to check this out, man, www.kofantasyboxing.com. Join it today. Again, www.kofantasyboxing.com, and tell them Billy C. sent you. Now back to Talkin' Boxing with Billy C., the only radio host man enough to take a punch from Mike Tyson. Wait a minute, man. Hold, hold, hold on there. Jeremy, man, uh, I need you to take this one, all right? Wait, what? What? No way. I, I, I can't do this. Need I remind you I'm Billy C., damn it? Now put on that mustache and get in there. Hey, hey, look at me. I'm Billy C. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> The undisputed heavyweight champion of Boxing Talk Radio. It's Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. Test one, two. Test one, two. My fellow Americans, good evening. Welcome back to Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. It's great to be here discussing the sweet science with everybody. I love boxing. I love talking boxing. That's what I do. Um, Bill. Oh, wait, what, what? Bill. Why are you interrupting yeah, um, me? What? Wrong, wrong. What's wrong, the problem? Billy, what? C. I did not have. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna have to ask you. What do you mean Billy. wrong, Billy C? What's going Sorry. on here? Fine, I'll go. I just wanted to talk some boxing on TPS Radio. Dot That's all I wanted to do. I don't need your damn show. I'll get my own. Talking wrestling with the other Billy C. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. I've always been a Hulkamaniac anyway. <laughs> Broadcasting live, brother. Welcome back to Talking Boxing with Billy C on the mighty TPS Radio.net, brother. What you gonna do, brother? And we're back. You are listening to the Talking Boxing with Billy C show. And you're watching us on the Fight Now television channel. If you don't have Fight Now in your sports channel lineup, you need to uh, call your local television provider and tell them you want Fight Now right now. That's all you got to do. Pick up the phone and call them. You know, you call who you're paying your bill to. That You get your TV on. I don't care if it's satellite dish or cable. Pick up the phone and call them. Say, hey, I want the uh, Fight Now channel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to add it to my sports channel lineup. And they'll say, okay. And they'll give it to you. For all the information about the channel, you can find it on the website, www.fightnow.com. Speaking of Fight Now, uh, don't forget, mark it down. We're going to be doing a couple of post-fight shows. September 8th, right here on uh, at the Billy C. Studio, we're going to be doing the post-fight show, the Andre Ward-Chad Dawson fight. And people are getting psyched for that already. And then a week later, we're going to be following it up with uh, that Super Saturday. Man, we got uh, two big fights couple of miles apart from each other from Las Vegas. Uh, of course, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., if he decides to keep training, <laughs> is taking on Sergio Martinez, a pay-per-view fight. And then, of course, uh, we have uh, uh, the uh, Saul Alvarez against Josito Lopez fight. And uh, we're going to be doing a uh, post-fight show right from the uh, beautiful Fight Now Studios in Las Vegas, uh, immediately following that. So uh, we've got, the, uh, got some cool people in the chat room right now. My man Cesar. Uh, who I uh, was just giving kudos to, stepping in and uh, helping me do the broadcast. You can check that out on com. The Bartholomew Bite. He bit uh, Grady Brewer right in the neck. I think he was going to suck his blood. <laughs> and it, was, it wasn't even midnight. But, uh, you know, my man Brandon is in there, and my girl Kaylee. You know, hanging fire. He's got his... He's hanging his feet on his desk because he's working right now. You know, another, you know those government workers. Uh, and my man, uh, boxing for free coach K haven't seen him in a while. He's in there too. So I'll give a shout out to all these people, uh, uh, taking some time so early in the morning. Uh, so good. Everybody's here to, to hear me start getting bashed. Cause I'm about to get bashed right now. Uh, beginning with my man, Manophonics. Now I've, I've been get, reading some emails from him. He's become a, a regular listener 
And uh, this email starts off like this. You disappoint me, Billy. <laughs> Man, I used to hear that a lot from my parents, you know. It's like, uh, oh, Billy, Billy, Billy. But he says, you disappoint me, Billy. Lamont was caught doing something he shouldn't have done. Like numerous American fighters, Evander Holyfield, Roy Jones Jr., James Tony, Shane Mosley, etc., etc. You could just as easily have said the IBF has ulterior motives. Uh, he goes on to say, uh, with Khan losing to Garcia, the IBF don't need to give him their strap. Lamont Judah will generate interest for them in New York or Atlantic City, uh, being East Coast fighters. Um, and I guess uh, that's what he means with his uh, ulterior motive. Um, first of all, let's make no mistake. J Zab Judah can't draw flies at a garbage convention. All right, I, this big misconception. Oh, Zab Judah, hell yeah, people want to see him. And no, people don't give a crap about Zab Judah. I'm telling you, Zab Judah is a big talk, all talk. You know, I, the best fight I saw, I keep saying this all the time, the best fight I saw with him in recently, really, I mean, in all honesty, was on YouTube. And it was him shooting craps with a crack whore that almost kicked his ass from one end of the street to the other because he was cheating, you know. And uh, I, to tell you the truth, that was the most entertaining thing I saw from Zab Judah in a while. Uh, now, Lamont Peterson, he's from Washington, D.C. Atlantic City, you know, does very well with whoever goes there. So, um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I guess Zab Judah would attract more people. He lives in Vegas now anyway. So, I don't know. But uh, Monophonics is uh, is uh, mad. Monophonics is mad at me because uh, uh, of uh, the IBF. Listen, I, I said it earlier. I say it again. You know, I, the bottom line is, I, you may have taken me wrong, but I'm going to take my lumps like a man. You know, uh, the bottom line is, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't support cheating in any way, shape, or form. In any way, shape, or form, cheating in anything. I don't, I don't even care if it's checkers. Monopoly cheaters are the worst, man. You know, but, uh, you know, the bottom line is uh, my 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 thought process was simply this. I felt that the IBF just took a step in, in trying to educate themselves. You know, if it was because they wanted to see a Lamont Peterson fight uh, over uh, Amir Khan, I, I, you know, which I you know, listen, Amir Khan didn't help his cause by getting knocked out by Danny Garcia. And by the way, Mano Phonics. Danny Garcia is from Philadelphia. If you don't think that he could sell out uh, Atlantic City, you're crazy. Atlantic City's like Philadelphia. A lot of Philly fighters fight there because it's so close. It's a, it's a, it's a drive. It's a one train stop, I think. I I think uh, no, no, you know what? It's not one train stop. I I took the train from Philly to uh, Atlantic City, and maybe maybe it was an hour train ride. But not that's by train stopping, you know, not car ride. But uh, the bottom line is, uh, come on, man. You know, Amir Khan didn't help anything by losing. You know, um, you know, I, um, the, the, the IBF. You know what? Uh, l let me let me say this. You know, they they made a decision based on expert testimony uh, from uh, from doctors that evaluated the. Levels of testosterone uh, that were in Lamont Peterson's uh, uh, test and uh, that were discovered during the test and made a uh, opinion uh, that uh, that they would not have enhanced his performance and assuming that he had the same levels in December, which, by the way, they never tested for. And and what I don't understand, maybe they got to call Campanero and Tomkovich at 845-221-4099. But the bottom line is what I don't understand is how come they haven't turned around and said Lamont Peterson was wrong. I, I don't know why he said he had this these implants in his system for December's fight because there's no proof of that. The only person that said that was Lamont. Now, granted, it's probably true. He said it. I'm not saying it's not true, but come on. It's called damage control. You know, I, I mean, you know, if, if I'm his management and I read on the Internet or wherever that Lamont Peterson just admitted that he was on the, on some kind of a steroid for the first fight that he won. And oh, by the way, it was a little controversial, if you recall, you know, I would have I would have, you know, ran over there and said, what the hell are you doing, Lamont? You dummy. You know, I mean, come on. You know, but nobody said anything about that. You know, and, and the bottom line is it's still hearsay. You know, he could have been mistaken. I mean, you know, if I'm the defense lawyer, I could, he could have been mistaken. 
you know, we went to the doctor. They said we could have done this. You know, we we did something else. We put this. We did that. We did. We didn't do that. You know, there's no test. There's no proof. There's nothing. You know, but instead he comes out and does that. So now the IBF is in a in, in a weird situation. You know, by by my point was just I felt that it was better for them to make a move towards some kind of education about the issue versus just jumping the ship. But uh, listen, I was in t- misinterpreted apparently by most of you guys thinking that I support that, which I do not. So I, you know, I will take my lumps. A whole lot of lumps. <laughs> Remember that? The cartoon? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, here's one from uh, my man Dennis Guzman. says, uh, what the F, Billy C? <laughs> Told you, man. I took a beating yesterday. Uh, what the F, Billy C? The IBF is just, corru- is just a corrupt organization, nothing more. Lamont Peterson already admitted guilt by saying that he had the steroid pellet implants before his first fight with Amir Khan and did not inform anyone about it beforehand. You know, let me stop right there. That's a, a big issue that uh, I failed to, uh, uh, you know, incorporate into my statement yesterday. And, and uh, Dennis is 100% correct. You know, um, the rule is, is if you do uh, get any kind, of med- any kind of medication, let alone a steroid, from a doctor that's prescribed, you're supposed to report it to the commission, whatever commission you're fighting under so that they have a record of it and they can get uh, all of the uh, information they need about it. So uh, I agree with Dennis there. Um, he says, uh, if he really thought he was doing nothing wrong, he would have told the commission about it. Exactly, that's what I said. He said, so these BS, so this BS that uh, it would not have helped his performance is just that, BS, because it did enhance his performance. That's why he took it. And we must also remember that not all banned substances are performance-enhancing substance but they are still banned. This is true. He says the IBF is intentionally misleading the public by moving the goalpost by saying that it did not enhance his performance. Not that I believe that for one minute, but even if it were true, it would not matter because that point of the, the because the point of the matter is, is that he had a banned substance in his body and he never did get a waiver for it from the IBF or any other organization. We boxing fans has to put a stop to this nonsense before boxing ends up like the UFC, where they are having an epidemic of steroid use, uh, abuse, uh, legal and illegal. It doesn't take Sherlock Holmes to know that the only reason most of these fighters are even having a supposedly low testosterone level is because of their prior abuses of steroids. Didn't we not learn anything from what happened in baseball? Billy C., I normally agree with you. And what you are saying, but this time you're way off base, Dennis. I appreciate your honesty, and uh, I don't know what else to say. I, I mean, uh, you know, I think people are misunderstanding me. I, I feel bad, you know, but uh, just like uh, I have my opinion, you have yours. I just felt that the IBF, again, I'm going to say it again and again and again. I just felt that they did um, a smart move by by at least appearing to educate themselves. You make a great point about the the uh, the report that he's supposed to report it to the commission prior to the fight, which I agree with. Uh, you also make a great point about, and this is my uh, you know lack of knowledge of performance enhancing drugs. Um, you also make a great point about you know if his testosterone levels were low, uh, maybe the reason for that for especially a young man like him um, is because he's doing other stuff. Uh, great point. Great email. Keep them up, man. I, uh, I'm, I'm taking your shots. I'm taking your shots, and, you're, and I deserve them. You're right. Um, Alex T. Alex T. says, uh, oh, good. This isn't about that. <laughs> good. Thank God. You know, I'm, taking, I'm, I'm down for the eight count here. I got up. I'm, I'm barely on my feet. Uh, Alex T. can always count on him. Hopefully he'll talk about fishing or something. Uh, he says, uh, I watched the Sergio Moore fight on Saturday. He landed some nice, clean shots, but I thought he was outworked almost every single round. Mora, of course, was his typical jerk self. You know, I, that's what it is. I think that's what I don't like about him. And I find myself uh, not being able to get past the jerkinisms of uh, fighters like him and then, of course, Mayweather and David Hay. And I need to get over that. I do. As, a, as somebody that's, uh, you know, doing this in the business, I, I need to get over this. Um, but uh, uh, anyways, he uh, was acting his own jerk self when the decision was announced and he didn't get the win. 
uh, but he got me thinking. He says, if you're a fighter who, who backs up all night, keeps you back to the ropes, and you have little or no power, and you can never hurt your opponent, you had better hope that the judges appreciate your style of boxing. Because if you have judges that simply score a fight on who's being more aggressive and landing more shots, which actually is part of the rules, I mean, uh, you should be scoring like that, uh, then you're going to lose a lot of those fights. Mora has no one to blame but himself for losing this fight. As for Brian Vera, I really respect this guy. He's beaten some very good fighters, and he's lost to some very good fighters. He always gives it 100% every time he gets in a ring. He probably never will be a world champ, but as a fan, you can't go wrong with a Brian Vera fight. I wish we had more guys like him in the sport. He'll fight anyone, anytime, anywhere. And if he loses, he dusts himself off and he comes right back. I feel, uh, I feel like Kevin, I feel, I, uh, he says, uh, I feel like years ago there were a lot of guys like Brian Vera, and now there aren't too many. The Mickey Wards and Kevin Pompeys of the sport. I'm talking about fighters who would uh, win a few, lose a few, but would never walk over uh, for anyone, was, or was never a walkover for anyone, and would get a lot of TV fights because they were always entertaining. Now, in most cases, if a guy gets a loss, he's done as a TV fighter. Make no mistake, in these fights where Vera is getting a spot on TV, he's the guy who's supposed to lose. No network puts Vera in with James Kirkland, Andy Lee, Sergio Mora, etc., because they are trying to build up Vera. He went up to Canada and KO'd Sebastian Demuz, which was a great fight on ESPN. He says a Canadian who had challenged for the title and was uh, on a win streak and trying to get another crack at a belt. You think they brought Vera to Canada because anyone in their right mind uh, and to get a, a KO'd on television? Instead, he destroyed Demir's in front of his hometown crowd in front of a national show on ESPN. I wish some of these fraud belt holders had the guts uh, of uh, Brian Vera. Uh, I agree with you 100%. You know, I agree with you 110%. Um, you know, uh, the excitement factor uh, seems to be lacking in our sport. And uh, fighters like uh, Brian Vera... Uh, you know, the Arturo Gattis uh, of the world, you know, they're, they're far and few in between. We do have a few, you know, uh, some of the top guys, uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, you know, uh, Bam Bam Rios is, is a guy like that. Even Mike Alvarado, you know, the two are going to be going head to head here coming up. So, uh, you know, I, I like it. I like it. So uh, great emails. Yeah, I took, uh, took some shots today. But uh, hey, you know what? That's what I like about reading the emails uh, on the show. Not only does it drive the, 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 the show and what we're talking about, uh, but, uh, you know, I give you guys a platform to, uh, to express your feelings, whether you agree with me or not, and I'm going to read them, you know. So uh, I appreciate them all, and uh, keep them coming, good or bad. Uh, Monday night, there was some fights in uh, Japan. I love the, uh, uh, I love the Japan fights. Uh, they have them on all the day. Hey, by the way, I'm going to jump, uh, jump out of boxing for a minute. You know, I was watching the show. It's Shark Week on Discovery, man. And uh, who the hell would go in the water? You know, I think of Japan because they got, you know, all that water surrounding them. And, and uh, you know, I know there's a lot of tuna around there. But, man, the sharks are crazy, right? I, I've been watching the uh, the air shark. What are they, the air, what do they call it? Uh, uh, something, air jaws or something maybe? I don't know. The sharks coming out, great whites coming out of the, you know, jumping out of the water. And they got the slow camera so you can see them. Amazing, man. The guy's petting him. The idiot is is in a kayak. You know, it looked like the picture of the guy in Massachusetts that's uh, going out for a nice Sunday kayak. And all of a sudden, it's like, whoa, <laughs> there's a shark behind me. You know, and this guy's going out in a kayak, one of these film guys. He's petting the sharks like it's a dolphin. He's petting them. Guess he never saw a shark tooth, uh, like, in his arm or something. Crazy. Anyway, Japan, Monday Night Fights. A couple of entertaining ones. Uh, uh, Nihito Araqua improved to 23 wins, one loss, and one draw, um, wh which was ironic because he was on his way to lose this fight and uh, had a knockout. He ended up stopping a uh, former uh, not once but two-time world title challenger, challenger in uh, Takahiro Shimada uh, in the uh, uh, eighth round. It was stopped at 2 minutes and 59 seconds uh, to give... Uh, uh, Akrawara, the win, he improves to 23-1-1 one, one with 15 knockouts, and uh, Shimada drops to 27-6 uh, and six with a draw, and he's got uh, uh, 17 knockouts. And the co-main event uh, was another uh, highly ranked fighter, uh, Roy Akaho, uh, improved to 19-0 and 0 with two draws, 12 of his wins coming by knockout. 
uh, in the uh, super fly weight division when he uh, uh, stopped uh, uh, Yohiri Toby uh, at 2 minutes and 58 seconds of the eighth round as well. So both of these guys uh, stopped their opponents uh, within a second of each other in the eighth round. Toby uh, was only fighting his fifth professional fight. He's 4-1 and one now uh, with, uh, with two knockouts. So uh, Monday night fights. And speaking of uh, night fights, how about Friday night fights? Uh, you know, we were all looking forward to Donovan George uh, fighting uh, 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 Adonis Stevenson, and it was supposed to be a showcase for Adonis Stevenson. Uh, these two guys were uh, uh, scheduled to fight on the undercard of uh, of um, uh, Pascal. <laughs> I went blank there for a second. Uh, uh, Jean Pascal Tavorius uh, Cloud. Uh, but when uh, Jean Pascal pulled out of the fight, uh, they uh, they didn't have a venue, so uh, they were lucky because ESPN had a main event that dropped out. So guess what? They all made a deal, and uh, Donovan George against uh, Adonis Stevenson was moved to the main event for this Friday's fights on ESPN. However, there's been a wrench thrown in the mix. That's right. Guess what? Guess what? <laughs> you know. Donna Stevenson hurt his hand. He hurt, he hurt his widow hand. That's right. Um, he pulled out of the fight. He pulled out of the fight, but Donovan George still gets to fight, but it's become very complicated. Donovan George, now, this was, a, this was a, an elimination fight. Donovan George against uh, Adonis Stevenson was an elimination fight, and the winner was going to become the mandatory challenger for Carl Frotch. However... Because uh, Stevenson hurt his hand, he pulls out of the fight. They did find a replacement for Donovan George, so he will still continue to fight on Friday, and he will still continue to be on Friday Night Fights. However, he will not become the main event. The co-main event, Carlos Molina against Damian Freas uh, in the uh, uh, junior middleweight divi division, they have been elevated to the main event. And now, John, and then now Donovan George, the bomb, uh, he is going to be fighting Dionzio Miranda, and they are the co-main event. So they're going to open up the broadcast. You know, I, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know, the bottom line is this. He didn't break his hand. He didn't break his hand. He bruised his hand. You know, I, what's going on? Uh, you know what? Listen, a guy like Stevenson, now let me start up before you guys start getting the hate mails together. A guy like Donovan, uh, a guy like uh, Donovan Stevenson needs his power, right? He's a power puncher. He, need, he needs the power in both his hands. So you know, he, apparently, you know, they describe it. They describe it as, and they had an expert come in who diagnosed it as a severe bruise with major swelling. My little puppy Rottweiler bites me in the hand, and I get a major bruise with some major swelling going on. And then the next day it's down, and uh, you know I'm I'm okay now. Obviously that's uh, uh, that's different than uh, than punching them. But what are they doing? You know, a week before your fight. I mean, I, you know, I talk to trainers that know what the hell they're doing, and and you know all the work for a fight, especially this one, that was planned ahead. And and I mean, you know, you you got to go back um, all the way until I mean, it was originally scheduled for August 11th. You know, um, he suffers the things. So, I mean, when Pascal suffers that, um, you know, I, I mean, this guy's been training. You would have to assume that Stevenson's gotten all this sparring in and everything else. How do you hurt your hand now of the week before the fight? It happened on Friday. So, you know, exactly one week before. How do you do that? What are you hitting? Cement blocks? You karate chopping boards? You trying to you trying to break that world record with with you know breaking uh, cement blocks in ha in half? You know, I mean, uh, you sparring, you hit somebody's head, you 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 bust up your hand on a heavy bag. I, I mean, I don't get it. I don't get it, man. You know, I, whenever there's not a break, you know, it's like New York State has a law, right? When you get into an accident, or something. I mean, listen, if you want to make money, if you want to get money. From an accident, you got to break. I will never forget. I was in a, involved in this accident that I still suffer from today. Uh, you know, but no breaks, no breaks. It was a vicious accident and everything else. I wasn't even in it. I mean, uh, I, I mean, I, it wasn't my fault. I should say, you know, we were sitting in the car, you know, and and uh, you know, I, we had just tapped against somebody, and then this other car smashed into the back of us and, and totaled out this car. And uh, uh, you know, I mean. 
you know, my neck is still whacked out from it, right? Never got a nickel from it. Never got a penny. And I remember the uh, insurance people saying, you know what? In New York State, if you're involved in an accident and there's a fracture of any kind, it's, a leg- it's considered a legitimate injury and you get money. Well, I've always thought of that as a parallel with injuries in sports. You know, if it's a bruise, if it's swelling and stuff like that, okay. You know, if you play football and you're a quarterback and, and your your throwing hand is all swelled and you can't grip the football, fine, you can't throw it. If you're a pitcher, you can't grip the baseball, same thing. You know, if you're a batter and your hands are swollen and you can't swing the bat, same thing. But usually the swelling goes down in a couple of days. And as long as there's not a break, it's okay. In boxing... You know, I understand that you need to have your hands and they have to be 100%. So why not take precautions to protect your hands as you're coming into the final week of your training? By the way, by the time you enter into that final week, like that Friday when he supposedly injured his hand, um, or maybe it was on the Wednesday, uh, you know, you're at the end. You're not sparring anymore. Whoever's sparring a week before the fight, even 10 days before the fight, is, is making a mistake. You know, the timing and everything was already done. You're just fine-tuning stuff. You're, you're, you're doing some light pad work. You're doing, you know, some, some you're working on conditioning. That's it. You're done. The week of the fight, you know, you're, you're resting, man, or a couple, at least a few days before. You might be doing some running. You might be doing some jump rope, but that's it. You know, you're conserving all of the work that you're supposed to have put in prior to in preparation. So why all these injuries come out so late and so close to the fight is beyond me. You know, as far as Deonzio Miranda against Donovan George, you know, it's not a bad fight. Uh, Miranda's 30 years old. He's got a respectable record, 21 wins, 7 losses, a couple of draws, 18 knockouts. Uh, uh, His 21 wins, 18 come by knockout. He's out of Columbia. A lot of his earlier fights were in Columbia. He lives in Miami now. Um, In his last eight fights, he's only won three. So don't take your shoes and socks off. That means he lost five, all right? Uh, and, and his last fight was in June. He got blown away in the first round. He got knocked out by uh, a Van Tiel del Kurtzina in, uh, in the Ukraine. You know, uh, he's also uh, uh, lost to uh, the best contenders like uh, Kid Chocolate, uh, you know, Giovanni Lorenzo, and even uh, Roman Karmazin. Uh, but, uh, but he does have a couple of wins uh, against Sebastian Demures uh, and Luan Simon. Now, Luan Simon is a fraud. He can't, he can't fight. And Sebastian Demures, I think, was ruined uh, by uh, the aforementioned Brian Venter, uh, Brian uh, um, uh, Vera that uh, my man Alex T. mentioned before. So uh, George, of course, 22 wins, two losses, and a draw. And uh, they're going to be the co-main event this Friday. So anyway, hey, listen. I got to take a break. When I come back, I got some Pacquiao news. Got some Mike Tyson news that I wanted to talk about. And uh, I got some other boxing news. Don't forget, Amy Green is coming up uh, in a little bit. So all of that coming up uh, in about two. Talk and Boxing with Billy C. now has official merchandise available on TalkinBoxing.com. T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies and mugs, and yes, even undergarments. Talkin' Boxing Apparel is the perfect gift for the boxing fan in your life. Log on to www.talkinboxing.com. That's T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G.com. And place your order today. Join us here for two hours as Billy and the gang do what they do best. Every time I start talking about boxing, a white man got to pull a Rocky Marciano. I say, Rocky Marciano was good, but compared to Joe Lewis, Rocky Marciano ain't. It's Joe Lewis's ass. Joe Lewis was 75 years old when he fought. Huh? What? We're supposed to be talking boxing. It's Talking Boxing with Billy C. As Billy C. sits here in the multi-million dollar Talkin' Boxing Studios, sipping a fine wine before you're even out of bed, you should be thinking, damn, I wish I had a mustache like his. It's the Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. Show. He's Billy C. And you're not. Sucks to be you. Now let's dig into our archives and hear a rare interview when Billy C. first became the champion of Boxing Talk Radio. Uh, hello, Billy C. 
As the new champ, can we ask you a few questions? Why, certainly. Okay, your fans would like to know how you and your corner have successfully walloped the competition. We're not ordinary people. We're morons. Anything else? I'm a victim of circumstance. Did your success finally come when you made the show five days a week for two hours? What do you think? I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. Now, please tell the listeners what you've learned from making it this far. Certainly. If at first you don't succeed, keep on sucking till you do succeed. Great words of wisdom, Billy C. Keep up the great work as the undisputed people's champion with your show, Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. Any last words to anyone who's listening? This is your fault, you bonehead. <laughs> yeah. And we're back. You are listening to the Talking Boxing with Billy C. Show. You're watching us on the Fight Now television channel. And if you don't have Fight Now on your sports channel lineup, then you need to call your local television provider and tell them that you want Fight Now right now. That's right. That's what you've got to do. All the information about the channel can be found at their website, www.fightnow.com. And uh, by the way, every night is Fight Night on Fight Now. That's right, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, you can uh, see a new fight. And uh, for the li- latest listings, uh, you can uh, check out their website, www.fightnow.com. Um, they're in the chat room. We're talking. Uh, you know, we got uh, you know all, all the great people I mentioned before. And Coach, I wanted to ask you uh, about, uh, you know, obviously you got your fighters and uh, uh, ask you uh, the question, you know, I, I mean, am I wrong about the, the training technique? I mean, obviously I'm not a trainer. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the bottom line is, you know, what, why are these guys training so hard, you know, you, assuming sparring or something like that, you know, so close to a fight? I mean, where's the cutoff? Is it a week? Is it 10 days? Uh, you know, uh, wh- wh- what's the word, man? You know, uh, so let me know that. And uh, we can see, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm just not uh, I'm just not sure. I, I just don't know. You know, they said it was just a deep, uh, uh, deep swelling. You know, it was swell. I mean, it was a deep bruise. You know, um, at least it's not broken. But you know, here's a guy that uses his hands. I understand, and he needs you know power uh, in both hands. He he needs uh, he needs to be able to have uh, uh, his uh, his hands 100 percent. But I mean, uh, I, I don't know. Well, you tell me, Coach. He says now, Coach says I don't believe it. Uh, I see it as an out. Why I don't? Why I don't know. The, I agree. I mean, that's what I'm alluding to, man. I see it as an out, too. I, I mean, a, a, a fighter at his level is not still fighting that hard uh, or training, uh, you know, in that capacity a week before his friggin' fight. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen, man. You know, an out, maybe weight, maybe weight issue. May, maybe, maybe, you know what? You know, Adonis Stevenson, I, I like Adonis Stevenson. Don't get me wrong. But look at his record. You know, he's been very good lately, blowing out boxers and, and, and blowing out uh, fighters with not much pop. But if you look at his loss, his one loss, he was blown He was blown away. Now, granted, it was a long time ago. Could it be that he's starting to doubt his own chin against a guy like Donovan George? Donovan George isn't exactly, and thank God Murph's not in the, in the chat room yet. He's probably going to be here any minute. But... You know, the one thing about Donovan George is, 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 is he's not exactly a, you know, finesse fighter. Nobody ever said he was. But the thing about Donovan George is that he can bang. He can bang with the best of them. There's no question about that. And he can take a punch. You know, he his fights uh, ended with him on his feet, I believe. He never was taken off his feet. He was battered around the ring because he doesn't have much defense. You know, could it be that they were a little, uh, little, little, little nervous? You know, uh, you know, who knows? Who knows? Uh, can you hear me now? I feel like the Verizon commercial. Kaylee's like, what are you doing? I can't hear you anymore. Uh, I was uh, leaning away from the microphone. So, um, yeah, he says, maybe he didn't want to fight. Coach says, maybe he didn't want to fight in Oklahoma. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I don't I no, no, You know, Cesar Hernandez promised me. Promise me that the next time I go to Atlanta, 
that he's going to uh, take care of me, man, because uh, I got to see the wrong side of uh, uh, Atlanta. That's for sure. It was, uh, you know, although the, the people are all very attractive. But, uh, you know, the, the bottom line, uh, I need to see a different part of, uh, uh, of Atlanta. As far as Oklahoma, I don't know, man. Yeah, I, we we got to be careful what we say about Oklahoma because Amy Green is going to be coming on in a few minutes, and she's from Oklahoma. So, but uh, uh, anything anyway, I, I thought Stevenson. Coach is saying, uh, uh, you know, I kind of thought Stevenson was going to win a fight. I thought Stevenson was going to win a fight too, you know. And by the way, speaking of winning fights, you guys got to get back into the Billy C Challenge, man. We're giving prizes away uh, every month. You know, uh, we give a winner. You know, it's for free. All you got to do is pick the fights. I break down a fight. I give you my predictions on Friday. And then uh, you, uh, uh, the fights will be up under the Billy C Challenge, which is on BillyCBoxing.com. Uh, it's, you sign up. It's for free. And uh, you pick your wins. Whoever, whoever You pick your fighters. Who's going to win? It's just a, a win-loss thing. You don't have to pick the round. You don't have to pick nothing. Who wins? And whoever gets the best winning percentage at the end of the month wins the prize. Whoever gets the best winning percentage at the end of the year wins a, a package deal. I don't know. Maybe we'll send you to California or something. Maybe we'll send you to the Eiffel Tower in Vegas. I don't know. But uh, um, yeah, her, Caesar says, uh, um, yeah, I'm much better. Uh, I'm, I am. I'm much better parts of Atlanta than where the one we saw. I hope there's better parts of Atlanta than where we saw. I got to see one restaurant. It, was a, it, was, it wasn't even a restaurant. It wasn't even a restaurant. I mean, it was a restaurant, but, it, I mean, you can go to Applebee's anyway. I don't consider that a restaurant. When I go into a city, I like to check out, the you know, good restaurants, you know. But uh, uh, Kaylee wants to know what the prize is. Kaylee, man, just just win it. You'll get a good prize. Don't worry, man. You know, you just guess. You just get the right ones. You sign up, and you guess the right fights, and you'll get a prize. It'll be something good. Come on, man. You know? So, uh, uh, anyway, we'll see what, uh, see what happens there. Man, what just happened? She got uh, she got kicked out or something um, by that same thing that was after. Uh, you know what it is? Kaylee just hit the wrong key, and uh, and and I think when you hit those quote keys, it, it takes it as something negative and and kicks you out of the chat room. So uh, uh, I know Murphy. Uh, man, everybody's driving. I think something just happened to our chat room. But uh, anyway, um, Mike Tyson. Just finished his Broadway uh, show. It was called uh, uh, "It was called Undisputed Truth," and we had our very own Alex Papali who uh, went and uh, did the show. And uh, uh, you know, the bottom line is uh, uh, he wouldn't tell us anything. If you recall, I had to pull teeth. Uh, if you want to go back and listen to that, it wasn't last Wednesday show; it was the one before that. And uh, you know, I was asking him. I think it's titled. Uh, a Mike Tyson review, a Broadway review, or something. But uh, you know, I'm asking him questions. Hey, did he talk about this? Did he talk, about, uh, uh, you know, Alex was uh, like alluding to everything, you know, um, because I'm I'm convinced Spike Lee paid him to not give away anything. But uh, uh, to to much to uh, Alex Papali and Spike Lee's chagrin, uh, the uh, the shows came to an end. I guess the last one uh, is. Uh, um, coming to an end on, on, or did come to an end this past Sunday. It was called Undisputed Truth. You know, uh, it uh, was two hours. Spike Lee was involved with it. Um, they were sold-out crowds every time. Um, but a couple of crazy things happened, which I didn't hear. Number one, there was a death threat uh, through Twitter to Mike Tyson. And uh, during one show, an abuse group um, protested the show, was trying to get people not to go in. But uh, for the most part, they got great reviews. And uh, Mike Tyson, uh, uh, you know, he was he was pretty entertaining, man. He was pretty entertaining. For, I didn't get to see it, but it was pretty entertaining from what I read. And uh, uh, he said a couple of things uh, to the people who opened up his show. He says, listen, don't worry. You're going to leave here with both your ears tonight. Of course, referencing uh, one of the most famous memories of Mike Tyson, uh, chomping off and spitting out a piece of uh, a band his ear. Can you realize how, how crazy that is? I will never forget that, all right? I mean, and then when you stop to think about it, I mean, here's a guy, and I, I remember watching the the, uh, the replay of the way he kind of, you know, kind of corralled the Van Der Zier in his mouth and then chomped down and then actually bit the piece off and spit it out onto the, onto the, uh, onto the canvas. And, and, you know, uh, Mills Lane just looked in horror, like, what the F? 
what am I supposed to do now? You know, I mean, uh, did did you, did he bite you? Yeah, he bit me. The ear is missing. A piece of the ear is missing. And and in that uh, Evander Holyfield, when he shook his head in pain, he looked like a WWF move and uh, uh, crazy, crazy stuff. But uh, Mike Tyson said that, and also uh, he said that um, to his uh, to his audience. He said some great stuff. If you listen to the Alex thing, he he did come clean with some of the things, but. He says, I've actually appeared uh, on Broadway before. I got arrested uh, right up the street not too long uh, before I started pro. But Manny Pacquiao was announced uh, yesterday that uh, actually early today, but really yesterday, um, that he is going to be training at the wild card gym. That's right. He's going to be training at the wild card gym uh, as soon as he gets back from his uh, promotional tour. Um, he says uh, the press tour, because he is fighting November 10th, he says, uh, as soon as we get back from the press tour, uh, Manny's going to stay in the U.S. and begin training. This is uh, what Bob Arum said. Uh, Arum says uh, the initial leg of the press tour will be September 4th in L.A. Uh, the stops will be, uh, uh, depending upon the opponent, uh, the three fighters that are still in the race are uh, Timothy Bradley, Juan Manuel Marquez, and Miguel Cotto. You can cross Miguel Cotto off. He's not fighting him. He's not. You can cross that one off. Uh, so it's between Timothy Bradley and Juan Manuel Marquez. Um, I, like I was saying, and I agree with uh, given quality, um, you know, uh, the bottom line is uh, uh, they're crazy to, uh, to, to fight Juan Manuel Marquez uh, instead of Timothy Bradley. Uh, I think the Juan Manuel Marquez fight will be there for Manny. It will draw. And like uh, somebody said uh, in the chat room before, you know, you can go to, to, to Mexico and, and, you know, sell out one of those 100,000-seat arenas, you know, so... But uh, but anyway, according to Bob Arum, uh, Manny Pacquiao uh, is not going to be uh, training in the Philippines. He used to train uh, in the Philippines for one part of the uh, his training and then come to uh, uh, the wild card gym for the second part. Uh, but that's uh, not happening uh, this time, which uh, uh, makes uh, makes perfect sense to me. Uh, if uh, if you ask me anyway, um, you remember Joe Bugner? Probably not. Probably not. If you uh, uh, if you guys are uh, uh, young, uh, you probably don't know who Joe Bugner is. But uh, he was a heavyweight, and he actually was uh, uh, in in an era where you know he got to see all the. He was in the smack in the middle of what we regard today as the best era in heavyweight boxing. You know, late sixties, early seventies, and even went on into the eighties uh, and uh, and fought some guys. He fought, uh, of course, uh, people remember the Muhammad Ali fight. He also fought Joe Frazier, my, one of my favorite fighters, Ron Lyle, uh, Jimmy Ellis, Henry Cooper, Ernie Shavers, you know, all these guys. Uh, Joe Bugner fought, uh, beat some of them, lost, well, lost to most of those guys. But uh, in the 80s, even uh, uh, in the mid-80s, he was still fighting uh, when he moved to Australia. And uh, he beat James Quick Tillis. Uh, he beat David Bay. Now, David Bay was a huge win for Joe Bugner. David Bay was uh, uh, a very hot prospect at one point. As a matter of fact, I believe that uh, he got a shot at a world title against, uh, uh, well, I know he did against uh, Mike Tyson, but I think he did against Larry Holmes, too, you know, David Bay. But uh, but anyway, he beat David Bay, and uh, he also uh, uh, beat uh, former world uh, heavyweight champion, uh, um, uh, Greg Page as well. So, uh, what am I talking about Joe Bugner for? Well, they just inducted him into the Australian Boxing Hall of Fame um, this past weekend. His uh, uh, career record was 69 wins, 13 losses, and a draw. 41 of his W's coming by knockout. Uh, he is living in Australia right now. Um, he was inducted. Now, he was also inducted uh, this year uh, with some other uh, people that you've heard of, like how about former... Um, featherweight champ, or, or I should say, uh, um, super featherweight champ. Um, no, featherweight, featherweight. Um, no, junior lightweight, which is super featherweight, right? Um, lo I lost my mind there for a second. IBF uh, junior lightweight champion, uh, Robbie Pendon. Remember him? 25 wins, four losses, uh, and uh, 14 uh, um, uh, wins coming by knockout. He won his world title by stopping my man Nate Campbell, uh, and uh, he got inducted into the Hall of Fame. He also uh, was uh, part of uh, 
1992 and 1996 Olympics. Uh, Wally Taylor, uh, who won the uh, gold medal uh, in the 1958 uh, British Games, and he became a, uh, a world-ranked uh, top 10 uh, fighter, uh, beating uh, guys like Jimmy Carruthers and uh, Arab uh, uh, Copeland uh, during his career, which uh, uh, he had a career record of 21 wins, five losses, and a draw, six of his wins coming by knockout. Uh, former Australian featherweight, lightweight, and welterweight champion Frank Thorne um, also uh, was uh, uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame. Peter Felix, who was a heavyweight uh, and was born in the late 1800s, mid-1800s, um, was uh, also inducted. He had a, uh, a career record of uh, 24 wins, 19 losses, and 7 draws. Um, he uh, uh, fought all the way up until he was 48 years old. Johnny Famichon, uh, Famicon, who, was, uh, uh, who uh, won the uh, world featherweight title uh, against uh, the Cuban Flash, he got inducted. And author and writer, I should say, Ray Wheatley, uh, he also uh, uh, has been involved in the sport of boxing for almost 50 years, and uh, the Australian Boxing Hall of Fame inducted him. So congratulations to uh, uh, Joe Bugner and all the rest of the uh, 2012 Australian Boxing Hall of Fame inductees. Um, you know, Murphy's in the chat room now, and he, uh, he missed it, man. He missed it. I was... Uh, uh, you know, I was just saying about the about. I know that you were dying to see your favorite fighter, Donovan George, fight a Donna Stevenson, uh, but uh, but now it's uh, not going to happen. So, um, we have a couple other things that are going to be going on uh, in the sport on October twelfth in Atlantic City. Uh, the uh, NABA lightweight champ uh, Doran Spivey, yeah, he's still fighting. They call him dangerous. He's only dangerous when he when he takes on uh, you know. Uh, uh, fighters of lesser uh, quality than himself. But uh, he's got a record of 41 wins, 6 losses, 30 of his w W's come by knockout. He's making a title defense o October 12th against uh, Lightning Rod Salika, who's 16-1 and one with three knockouts taking place in Atlantic City. So uh, we'll be uh, looking at that one. In case you're just joining us or if you fast-forwarded the beginning of the show, um, don't forget, if you're looking to check out the famous, which is becoming the famous... Uh, uh, Jorabus Bartholomew bite in the neck to the uh, neck of Grady Brewer, which uh, disqualified him, and Grady got the uh, win and won the IBO Intercontinental uh, Junior Middleweight title last Saturday in Atlanta, in Hotlanta. Uh, you could check out the whole fight. It's up on BillyCBoxing.com, uh, right on the front page. Check it out. And uh, you'll get to hear me calling the action with my man, Cesar Hernandez, who's in the chat room right now, who... Uh, Went to the show, minding his own business. He went there just to cover the show for the website. You know, went there and uh, uh, was going to, uh, you know, we were going to talk. We had e uh, emailed or, or phoned or texted or whatever the hell we did. We were going to meet face to face. We say hello. We start talking. Next thing I know, I put him on the spot and he does color commentating for us and uh, did a fantastic job. So check out his job uh, and the, uh, of course, the bite in the neck uh, uh, that Grady Brewer uh, sustained to uh, to win the uh, the IBO's uh, Intercontinental Junior Middleweight title. Uh, that's up on uh, uh, BillyCBoxing.com right now. So, um, yeah, Murph, I put him on the spot. I put him on the spot for sure. But um, we'll uh, we'll have to uh, uh, see. Hey, speaking of Murph, you know he got us going in. Uh, uh, he got us going in the right direction. I'm going to get to that in a second. But you guys remember when I had T. Board Broche on the show? He's a young, uh, you know, we're talking about, Alex T was talking about, uh, th like, basically a throwback fighter to fighters that, you know, like Brian Vera, you know, fighters that uh, never quit, um, you know, make uh, make exciting fights, action-packed fights, all that happy stuff. Well, T-Boy Broch is a young Canadian fighter who fights just like that. I love this kid. Uh, he's uh, He was involved in an accident, uh, put his uh, career on hold for a little bit. He's been matched. Uh, he's one of these guys that, do not look at fighting. Um, he, he looks at boxing the way we want all fighters to, but the business aspect of it, um, you know, they haven't uh, managed his career very intelligently. But nonetheless, he's going to be returning on September 8th in Mississauga, Ontario. So uh, keep your eyes open for that. If you're going to get tickets, uh, you know, I'm sure you can find it um, somewhere. I don't have the information 
I know it's going to be in Mississauga. I know it's going to be on September 8th. And uh, um, we'll have to, uh, uh, you'll have to wait and see um, what the deal is, who he's fighting, all of that stuff. Uh, but, uh, but tell him Billy C. sent you. Because T-Boy Broch is, uh, I like the kid. So, um, Big fights going to be taking place in uh, September, September 8th. I mean, we've got a lot of fights. But September 8th, uh, which is a Saturday night, Tomas Adamak uh, is uh, going to be uh, uh, taking on a, a big guy. You know, I guess Travis Walker is a big guy. Um, Travis Walker's got a record now, 39-7-1 with 31 knockouts. You know, the thing about Travis Walker is that this guy was uh, um, not only a, a journeyman or a gatekeeper or whatever, um, but he was a top contender when he stepped in the ring against uh, Chris Ariola. And he's been on a downward swing ever since. However, he just uh, is coming off a, a big win against Callie Meehan. And, uh, you know, we've talked about this. When fighters get a big win, um, it kind of changed their psyche a little bit. And I, I, I'm thinking that, you know, maybe that's what's happened with, uh, with uh, Walker because now he's fighting Tomas Adamak. Now, Tomas Adamak, you know, you know, I, I don't believe in, in heavyweights in pound-for-pound pound rankings because... Uh, you know, I've explained this to you guys along uh, a lot of times why I don't like it, but um, Tomas Adamak is an exception because he, he's he's already performed in in you know two other weight classes aside from heavyweight, and uh, he's performed that championship level. So um, you know he's an exception. So uh, you know uh, I'm looking forward to this fight. See how he does. Is he going to earn another shot at a Klitschko? We'll have to wait and see. September eighth. It's going to be during the afternoon because they're going to be broadcasting this live uh, in. Uh, 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 in Poland, and uh, the other thing is it's going to be broadcast live on uh, Wealth TV, so uh, everyone's going to get a chance to uh, to see this one. Um, don't forget about the uh, uh, great card that they got going on for Chavez Jr. and Sergio Martinez, um, of course, uh, uh, September 7th. Um, that fight uh, is going to be uh, uh, an interesting card for sure. We're going to be doing a post-fight uh, on that one right here, so uh, make sure you uh, uh, stick around. For that, after the fights, you come here five minutes after the uh, fight is over. Uh, we will uh, we will have that one on. Um, don't forget also about Nonito Donaire. You know he's actually in a good fight. You know I mentioned the the uh, Bam Bam Rios and uh, Mike Alvarado uh, fight that's going to be taking place October thirteenth. The main event is Nonito Donaire against uh, Tokiyashi, Toshiaki Nikashoka. And uh, Toshiaki Nikashoka, Tokashaki Tokashaki um, Tokashaki, he's, uh, that's, that's going to be a good fight for, uh, uh, for Donaire. I, I think it is. I think it is. Um, I also, uh, I also had uh, uh, mentioned the fight uh, with uh, Gamboa, not Yoriokas Gamboa, Yo Elvis, Yo Elvis Gamboa. He's fighting on September 7th, uh, and he's taking on, uh, uh, he's taking on Diaz, uh, um, we have uh, uh, the young. Uh, I'm sorry, Kenneth Diaz, who's six and zero, and uh, Yo Elvis Gambo is seven and one. So that's taking place on, on September seventh, September first, in an IBF uh, mandatory uh, fight. Ricardo Nunez, twenty four and two, is going to be taking on Moretti Mathani. Now that's going to be a decent little fight too. So uh, make sure you uh, look at that one. Uh, the WBF. I keep telling you guys, keep an eye on the WBF. Uh, they mentioned, uh, they announced a, a, a good fight uh, that's taking place, uh, I believe, this weekend. Um, that's August 17th uh, between uh, Jose Piston Lopez and Jose Emilio Pereira uh, for the uh, WBF World Welterweight title. So uh, uh, keep your eyes open on that one. Don't forget we got uh, Antonio DeMarco against uh, John Molina. Uh, that's coming up uh, uh, on... Uh, uh, when is that one? Uh, well, I don't know. That's uh, I don't have the date in front of me on that. I thought I did, but uh, oh, September eighth. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. September eighth. So uh, keep your eyes uh, keep your eyes peeled for that one. Um, all of that's coming up, man. Uh, we already mentioned this, and uh, yeah, we got everything, man. We we covered everything. We covered everything except for this. Um, we're gonna have uh, Amy Green coming on in a few minutes, but. Yesterday, well, it was actually over the weekend, my man Dave Murphy was responding. It was actually last week, and uh, we were talking about uh, uh, the middleweight division, and he said in the chat room that he felt that uh, um, that 
my man, who's not my man at all, um, Bernard Hopkins is a top 10 uh, middleweight of all time. And I laughed. And then he said, well, I'm going to, and then he posted it in the forum. And by the way, the Billy C forum, let's resurrect that. You know, we were going hot and heavy. Now it's just me and Murphy in there talking between ourselves. And a lot of you are still registered in there. So check it out. Uh, www.billycboxing.com. And uh, uh, there's, it says uh, Billy C forum. So, uh, so check that out. But uh, anyway, um, we have uh, Murphy's list right here. And uh, this is the way uh, Dave Murphy sees the middleweight division now. This is all-time great middleweight division. And I'm asking you guys to send me your top 10 or 12 uh, all-time great middleweights of all time. Who's your top 10? And I'm going to tell you mine on Friday. But as they come in, I'm going to read them. And this is Murphy's. Murphy's got number one, Sugar Ray Robinson. Can't argue with him there. Sugar Ray Robinson could arguably be the number one uh, all-time great middleweight and welterweight because, uh, actually, uh, uh, he campaigned in both. Uh, number two, he's got Harry Greb, another great pick. You know, Harry Greb, one of the greatest. Um, Carlos Monzon, number three. You know, come on, Carlos Monzon. You know, great, 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 great. Speaking of Carlos Monzon, we're going to be doing a blast from the past on him tomorrow, so you'll learn more about him if you don't know who he is. Stanley Ketchell. You know, if you don't have Stanley Ketchell on your list, what the hell? You know, Stanley Ketchell is a guy that uh, uh, was a top uh, middleweight, um, and he was a kid when he got shot in the back by his, uh, you know, by the by the girl he was hitting on, his boyfriend or husband or whatever. Um, Mickey Walker, number five. I, I love that he put Mickey Walker in there because he's, he's an underrated and forgotten fighter, one of the toughest uh, ever to fight. Uh, and and Mickey Walker, he, he reminds me him and him and uh, uh, him and Harry Greb uh, were like, uh, uh, you know, these these. Uh, I look at him as like the Bowery Boy type guys, you know. Which uh, incidentally, my man uh, Brooklyn Mike, he sent me a couple of Bowery Boy uh, DVDs uh, a few weeks ago. I love that, love that stuff, man. And if you haven't seen the talk in uh, New York sports with Billy C and Brooklyn Mike, you're missing out on some. Uh, uh, good stuff. Anyway, number f- number six, he's got Marvelous Marvin Hagler. And he's got Marvelous Marvin up that high. Um, number seven, he's got Charlie Burley, another guy, one of the greatest fighters, never to, never to uh, win a, uh, a world title. Uh, he never got offered a shot at a title because of the color of his skin. Uh, one of the slickest, best fighters. If you want to read about him, check out uh, Harry Ott's book, uh, Charlie Burley and uh, Murderer's Row. Great read. Uh, really puts in perspective how great these fighters were. As a matter of fact, Sugar Ray Robinson had said in public, there's only one fighter I will never fight because he's too good, and that's Charlie Burley. Imagine that. And he's got B-Hop at number eight. Bernard Hopkins uh, at number eight, all-time great. Uh, number, uh, you got two number eights here. He's got two number eights. What's he got, a tie? I guess he's got a tie. He's got number eight and number eight, Emil Griffith. See, now, I wouldn't have put Emil Griffith as a middleweight. He's a junior middleweight, so I, w- I wouldn't have put him there. Marcel Serdan, another great one at number nine, uh, and he's got uh, Tony Zale at number ten. Uh, he's got honorable mention, Tiger Flowers and Jake LaMotta. And uh, he says, by the way, the reason why I didn't uh, um, you know, uh, put in uh, Bob Fitzsimmons and Dick Tiger is because I have him rated elsewhere. You know, you've got to put Bob Fitzsimmons in there. You know, he was a middleweight champion for a long time, and so was Dick Tider. You know, yes, they both campaigned and, and won belts in other divisions, but still. He uh, wanted to say, also, I thought I'd mention that although I have Hopkins eighth, I don't like his chances head-to-head with a lot of the middleweights who don't make the list. For example, a matchup with these fellow Philly fighters, uh, Benny Briscoe, Tyrone Everett, and Marvin Hart, um, obviously in dream matchups. Uh, Marvin Hart, I, you know, I just finished a book by Al, Adam Pollack uh, on Marvin Hart. He was a, he was a big version of uh, of Arturo Gotti. Benny Briscoe, come on, man. He was one of the toughest guys. I agree. So, I mean, listen, if he can't beat those guys, how do you put him pound for pound? I, I don't know. I, I mean, he's all-time great Bernard Hopkins at number eight. I mean, I got him in my all-time great list, but not that high, bro. Not that high. But uh, anyway, hey, we got to get uh, we got to get my girl Amy on and all of that's coming up in about two. 
Talking Boxing with Billy C. Every week, two hours of the best boxing talk on the radio. Mike Tyson looked like he put on some pounds. He was fat. He went into McDonald's and he just said to them, hey, give me six of everything on the menu. He put on two watches and covered two time zones. I'm talking fat here. Got on a scale the other day and it said, come on, one of you guys got to get off. Last thing I heard is that he jumped into the ocean and he left a ring around the continent. <laughs> He's Talk fat. Boxing with Billy C. Time for another major in golf. This time it's across the pond for the Open Championship. What's at stake? That's next on Sports Shorts with me, the Sports Princess. Want to put some wild into your weekend? Come to the all-new Mesquite Pro Rodeo. Corral seats start at just $12, and kids are always half price. Get your tickets at Kroger and save $5. This weekend, meet the rodeo legends. Tractor Supply sponsors the Neil Gay Cowboy Reunion. The city ends and the Wild West begins at cool air-conditioned Mesquite Arena. I-635 and exit 4, 730 Friday and Saturday. Mesquite is the official rodeo capital of Texas. Filled with tricky pot bunkers that you have to climb into, no less, this year's Open at Royal Litham and St. Anne's in England is certain to be tough, even for the most seasoned professional golfer. Tiger Woods, who hasn't won a major in four years, is looking to pick up his 15th career title. The last American to win at Royal Litham was David Duvall in 2001. Should Woods win, it would be his fourth Open, the last back in 2006. The Americans and the Europeans and everybody else in between know that this is no walk in the park. And with rain expected, they'll need more than umbrellas and a good caddy to navigate this 7,086-yard course that rewards great ball striking and punishes the rest. Whoever wins the Claret Jug will no doubt be playing some target golf at this major. I'm the Sports Princess with Sports Shorts. Now back to Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. He may not have an excellence in broadcasting award, but the night's still young. And he's got martinis. So you never know what may be by morning. By morning. It's Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. The one, the only, Don King. Makes me feel good, Billy, to have you, the number one show in the country, Talkin' Boxing with Billy. So I invite each and every American that's listening to this great show to tune in. This, we want you to be there with Billy and me. And we're back. You're listening to the Talking Box with Billy C. Show. You're watching us on the Fight Now television channel. And uh, if you don't have Fight Now, you got to call your local television provider and tell them that you want Fight Now right now. That's it. Pick up the phone and call them. All the information about the channel can be found at their website, www.fightnow.com. Speaking of now, Amy Green joins us. What's up, Amy? Good morning, Billy. How are you doing? Oh, better than uh, Grady Brewer's neck. I know you didn't want to talk about it, but I'm going to get it right out of the way. It's up on the website, man. And uh, have you had a chance to talk to him yet? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I said, have you had a chance to talk to Grady Brewer yet? Of course I have. I saw him the Monday that he got back from um, the bite fight. And, you know, he's, he's, <laughs> he's trying to take it all in stride and go down the road and see what's next. I think the title opportunity gives him a little bit to work with, and we'll wait and see what he's got going on. What did he say? Did he? Did he? Did, was he shocked? I mean, uh, what's his version of uh, of what happened? He, he he said it was. First of all, he said it was an interesting circumstance to be there in Atlanta and have to fight in the conditions that it was in. And he said, you know, it's just you know he's been in a lot of fights, seen a lot of crazy things go on, but this this is a little bit out of left field to be, you know, trying to conduct business and win a fight, and all of a sudden, you know, a guy turns a vampire on him. So, you know, he, he was just like, what? And, you know, his, his wife was ringside watching the fight, and I think, I think she was a little more agitated than he was, but he was able to get through the strange experience and, and bring the title home, and that's what he went to do. Yeah, did he? You know, even though it took a little, took a little chunk out, it looked, it looked kind of weird, but, you know, he's, he survived and ended up with a weird win. Now, what's his thoughts? I mean, um, 
I, I know that I know that there was uh, talk about him possibly getting the world title shot. Um, he would be a, a eligible, but it's not. He didn't become a mandatory. I talked with the IBO directly, and they said um, that he is not the mandatory. The only way he could position himself as a mandatory would be to uh, defend his own title that he just won now three times, uh, unless the uh, the world title holder decides to fight him. Has he discussed anything about his future plans with you? He said he would do what it takes to take the steps to get into the actual contention for the larger IBO belt. So he's just he's just going to wait and see what opportunities present himself. He's not going to be shy about you know about defending that title. That that that's what you do to take the steps to get to the big contention, which is why he took this fight in the first place and endured a series of bizarre circumstances. What's going on in women's boxing? I know we got the uh, the fight that you're dying to see, Mia St. John against uh, uh, the, the what's her name, Christy Martin. Uh, what, what's the deal with that? You know, I'm really not dying to see that because there's a couple of smaller fights that smaller ladies or or, or better fighters that follow up that fight. You know, this is supposed to be finally um, Mia St. John's farewell fight at the conclusion of this. I'm going to have to say for, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, you know, Mia St. John could win this, go on, get her get her, her big career-ending win over Christy Martin, and she'll call it a day and retire. And I'm thinking Christy should well do the same. Yeah, you know, um, both of them shouldn't be fighting. I guess, I guess uh, Mia St. John said that's it. Regardless, she's not fighting anymore. It's her last fight, and uh, they're just trying to get the 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 fiftieth win for Christie. But you know, I, I just think it's so non relevant. I mean, uh, does anyone really care about the fight? I mean, do you, have you heard anything about you know maybe pre ticket sales or anything like that? I, I would think there'd be no uh, no demand at all. I've 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 heard nothing but some of their back and forth and how their their weigh-ins and their public their meetings you know pre-fight meetings have been contentious and everything like that with Christie saying I'll kill you okay that's fine for all the theatrics but I think maybe five years ago she could have killed her but she didn't she didn't she did very little damage when they fought the first time so this isn't something that would have me on the edge of my seat watching. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know if I can watch. But uh, give us some. Give us a roundup of what's going on in women's boxing. Um, there's an interesting fight going on August 18th for um, Lisa Brown versus Jackie Mava. It's going to be this Saturday, the 18th, for the WBC Super Bantamweight title. Which I think that's going to be a really, really good fight between two. Really, really good fight between two girls that have been around for a while. And I want to say, Lisa Brown has the edge in age, but Jackie Nava is no joke. And I think that whoever comes up with a winner on this is going to is going to still have quite a few fights left. And another interesting fight, August thirty first, between um, some super featherweights is going to be Lindsay Gerbot and Ronica Jeffrey steps up to face her August thirty first. I love that Dover fight. Downs. I love that fight, and I think that if the if the Lindsay Garbaut that I got I got to call her on on twice on uh, Canadian uh, television, uh, and and she if 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 the real Lindsay Garbaut comes, she's going to do a job on Ronica Jeffries. If not, Ronica's going to do what she does all the time. I think this is this is a, a good measure for Ronica Jeffrey. And she's going to have to be 100% on her A-game because Lindsay Garbot can be a monster. She can really be a monster. She can give you everything that, that she's got and then some. Now, you know, Janine Garza had stopped her a couple of years ago, but Ronica will definitely have her hands full and have to be have to be ready for anything because Lindsay Garbot is a physical fighter. Um, she's she's very tough, and that's, this, is, this is a good step up for Ronica. I'll be interested to see the results of that. Yeah, no, me too. I'm looking forward to that one. Well, you know, we can't avoid the elephant in the room, which will be the Olympics, which just concluded. You know, is Clarissa Shields going to be in the Olympics again, or is she going to turn pro? What's the story there? 
I haven't heard her say anything. I've been watching. I've been watching on Twitter and different sites and everything. I haven't heard her say. I haven't seen comments either way. But you know, she's 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 become the second youngest person to win a gold medal boxing. I think the first person in her age group to win something was Meldrick Taylor in 1984. But you know, she's she's definitely got the world by she's definitely got the world by a string now and. Does she want to wait four more years for another Games to come around, or does she want to go on, finish school, still maintain some amateur status, and, and go pro? You know, Marlon Esparza is going to retire um, and or has retired already. She's going to go back and continue her education. But, you know, these, these girls that have just, have just competed and everything, they've, they've got the opportunity right here in their hands to really sit up and take, take notice for the sport and propel it forward. It'll be interesting to see what they do. Um, I did speak with Robert Diaz yesterday from Golden Boy Promotions, and he said they're open to promoting more women on their cards before the six rounders yet, but he doesn't know yet, even with the Olympic momentum, that there's going to be a huge TV to demand. He said they would, they would just have to wait and see, but why can't a promoter move this, initi- move this momentum along and tell a network this is what we're going to do, this is what we have, and this is what could be a possible future. Yeah, it, it, the promoters have been uh, dropping the ball for sure with uh, with women's boxing, and I don't understand it because typically they are the fight of the night, and uh, I just uh, I just don't get it. I don't get it. But uh, we, we've been somebody is going to have to make a leap of faith here based on the momentum from the Olympics. You know, I don't know if they're going to jump out like NBA, like NBA and NFL scouts and start, you know, courting um, Clarissa Shields and Katie Taylor and everything like that, and, and it really makes a huge bid to have them, you know, be on your television screens and everything from, you know, commercials to fights to, to, to commentating men's fights or whatever to get them out there and increase their, increase their visibility. But this, this is the time, and... You know, there, there are other quality fights like the ones we just talked about with Lindsay Gerbot and Lisa Brown and Jackie Nava that are going to, they're going to benefit from not only what happened from the games, but going forward with good matches. Yeah, no, I, I can't disagree. I I agree there. And uh, I, I think that, they, I think for the most part, there are some decent matches out there and, uh, uh, you know, I think generally women are more receptive to taking tougher fights than the men. But, you know, if, if, it, if, it, be, if it becomes diluted like uh, it is with the men's divisions, then we may end up with women taking a step forward then two steps back, you know, if they don't take the right fights. Well, they need to take, you know, the, the women do what they can. But I, think, I think they've got a little bit sterner work ethic than the men do. You know, they don't seem to take huge gaps off in training before major fights and you know, don't seem to be, you know, running around and, you know, they put in the work. They have the dedication. They know that the odds are stacked against them, and they just jump in their head first and make it happen. Yeah, well, that's true. What else is cooking, man? Well, we've got a little bit of, you know, we got some excitement going on now, you know. Um, after Jackie Nava gets through, Lisa Brown, whatever the outcome for that is, she's scheduled to fight Mariana Juarez, and that's going to be interesting because Juarez has been busy lately. She hasn't been beaten, but a couple of her results may have been a little bit off, so let's let's see what happens with her. But these are Garbot and Ronica Jeffrey and Nava and Jackie Brown. Those are those are some ones to watch versus your underwhelming Mia St. John and Christy Martin. <laughs> I just don't, and they're talking about it in the chat room, saying that it's a pay per view. I mean, are people actually going to pay for that? I, 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 I was talking about paying for a ticket to to be there live, let alone pay for. It. I just don't think there's any demand. I honestly don't. It's it's a ridiculous thought that people actually care. You know, she was a she was a circus act when she fought during the Mike Tyson times, plus all of the turbulent stuff. Mia St. John was. I mean, she was she was an attractive woman. That was a little side, uh, you know, side note. But at this stage of their careers, uh, I, I just I can't see the value in it. I, I see little, if any, value in it, and I, I don't understand. You know, it's a pay per view on a Tuesday between two people that are verging on being being past the prime. 
you know, Mia St. John, at least, was smart enough as she came through her career going towards 55. And, you know, she, she made some marketing moves that are going to that are gonna let her survive past fighting days. You know, she's marketed herself very well, Playboy notwithstanding. And I'm sure Christy Martin still has a couple of dollars that she didn't spend paying Gloria Allred. So, you know, get this fight over with, bow out gracefully, and let other people come forward. That's, this is just time for that to end. What's your thoughts on uh, La Barbie and her layout? Uh, I actually saw some sneak peeks, and I, I tell you what, I, I thought she was in it. I, I'm not going to deny. I think that uh, Mariana Juarez is a, is a is a pretty uh, woman, but whatever they did to her in, in in the magazine, she's looking way hotter than she does when she steps in the ring. Well, I don't think it's I don't think it's Photoshop, girl. I just think that she's she's you know you're you're not going to you're you're not going to go out looking a red carpet ready when you get ready to fight. But you know that's 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 another thing that's going to. That's another thing that's going to bring people to the table for boxing, but that to me just brings more curiosity. She is a cute, cute girl, hence the name the Barbie, but if that gets you to the table, then you find out she can fight, then then you've increased your audience by that much more. First of all, you have to get them there, and if looks get you there, okay. And then everybody's going to have a big, pleasant surprise that, hey, this girl is pretty, she can fight, and let's go back and see another one. And then then you build it and they will come kind of a Kevin Costner kind of thing. Right. Well, we'll have to wait and see. So so, uh, what was your thoughts of, uh, um, real quick, about uh, Clarissa uh, Shields' performance in, in the in the Olympics? I know I know we touched on it a little bit, but, I mean, what do you think of her performances and, and how she acted? You know, there's, some people were critical of her, you know, her actions and stuff. Um, we all here in the States thought it was fine. What do you think? I don't see anything wrong with what she did. Um, you know, in, in, in the last match, you know, she, she was pulled in the corner. You've done what I told you to do. You've done everything. Now go, up there, now go out there and have fun. You know, first of all, it's the Olympic Games. She was winning. She was, she was doing everything that she was supposed to do. She had the fight, and, and she, made it, she did what she could do to make it a victory. You know, first of all, you're in England, and they're not known for – they're, they're in London. London's a little, London can be a little stiff sometimes, but, you know, she's 17 years old, and she is fighting in the Olympic Games. Yes, there are games, but it's still a series, huge major competition, but she did what she had to do to win, and she celebrated a little, you know? She's not, she's, she did nothing to disgrace anybody. She's, she's in her hands right now, got one of the most major accolades she could ever have, so why not enjoy it and have a little bit of fun with it? She did nothing to hurt anybody, and she wasn't disrespectful, nor was she derogatory, lewd, or obscene. So let her have her moment. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. But, um, well, what do you think of this IBF situation? I got hammered this morning on the show. I, I thought that the IBF uh, did a at least a smart move by seemingly educate themselves about the whole steroid issue with Lamont Peterson, but the uh, the masses of listeners said I, I was totally out of line that uh, they shouldn't have uh, re, they shouldn't have kept Lamont Peterson as the champ. What, what do you think? It's 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 it's, 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 it's kind of a fine line there. Um, if he was wrong, he shouldn't be rewarded. Yeah, you know, if he and if, if he if he was going to go along like like you know Margarito and claim he never knew, even though Margarito's issue was different, it was it was you know loaded gloves, if, if loaded wraps. If you're going to go along and say you didn't know anything about it, that that doesn't that you know that that dog don't hunt. But I, if you did wrong and you did, don't be rewarded, you know. Get you know, get taken from your spot in the top of the line. Go back and prove you can be what you're supposed to be. You know, get your suspension, get lose your title, whatever. Then get back in line and fight again, and come back and prove that you're worthy and and you're not dirty. Yeah, well, the whole other issue is that the commission has to reinstate Peterson anyway, so uh, it might all be for naught. Um, Manny Pacquiao is going to be fighting again in November. 
Um, the short list of opponents is Miguel Cotto, Juan Manuel Marquez, and Timothy Bradley. Um, I don't think that Cotto's going to be on the list because they're already arguing over the weight. Cotto's uh, rumor has it that he might want to move up in weight, which I think is a mistake, but uh, Pacquiao does not want to fight him at 154. I, I think Cotto's going to fight Mayweather in a rematch in Madison Square Garden in December with with uh, 50 Cent promoting it. I, I just think all the all the stars are lined up for that. So you cross Cotto off, and you're left with Juan Manuel Marquez and Timothy Bradley. I think the demand is a rematch for Timothy Bradley, but rumor has it that it's going to be Juan Manuel Marquez. What's your thoughts? I could care less about seeing Pacquiao fight Marquez again as flat as it was last time. But that's, 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 put that in line with Christy and Mia. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. Let's, let's, let's solve all the, let's, let's hush everything up from when you fought Timothy Bradley the first time and come back, make that a convincing win, beat him, and then go on to, you know, see what Floyd and Fitty got lined up for you, which, you know, um, the Floyd 50 thing that you mentioned in December, that would be a great birthday present, Bill. <laughs> well, you know, the the thing is, is that Tim, you know, I, I was talking about it earlier. You know, you look at it this way. Timothy Bradley, it was so much controversy. It's definitely the fight that we want to see Pacquiao avenge and everything else. But then you look at Bob Arum and you say, well, geez, Bob Arum's got to have a cash cow. He's got to have a cash cow uh, that he can keep making money. Now, he's got some other great fighters, Bam Bam Rios and so on and so forth. But, you know, the guy who beat his guy is Timothy Bradley. That's why it seems like the, you know, the Juan Manuel Marquez move might be the one. Because, you know, Bob Arum has a tendency to do what he calls marinade fights. And, uh, I, you know... I think that Juan Manuel Marquez and Manny Pacquiao number four will happen, but I think it will happen as their bum voyage fight, or at least that's what I hope happens. What's your thoughts on that? If he's letting that fight marinate, it's already rotted in my refrigerator. I don't like Marquez and Pacquiao. That just that's overdone. It was a horrible fight the last time, and if he's if this is what he's letting marinate on the back burner, that's that that's that's. that's you know, he's serving us up something. I have no, no, he's serving us, he's trying to serve us up something I don't want to buy. I, w I would, let's, let's get Timothy, the Timothy Bradley hur hurdle cleared and make a case once and for all that it was just, you know, a weird decision and he can come back and dominate him again. But, you know, however Bob, you know, whatever stew Bob concocts for Manny Pacquiao, he needs to add something to, he needs to add something to his performance here lately. Because he's been flat, you know he's he's act like it's just like he's going through the motions. You know, there's there's no killer instinct. If I want to see Manny Pacquiao fight somebody, I want to see the one that 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 beat the hell out of Antonio Margarito. That's what I want to see. Yeah, well, I think that that Manny Pacquiao is gone, and and the reason is something that Scotty Krause said. Scotty Krause said uh, on the show months ago, about a year ago, he said uh, that he thinks that Manny has lost his killer instinct ever since he's been uh, involved with, uh, uh, you know, human human humanitarian issues since he's been in politics. And I think it's true, because if you look at since he's been elected, look at all his, his fights. You know, he's touching gloves with Shane Mosley so much, I thought they should get a hotel room. You know, he, he took his foot off the gas on Timothy Bradley, ultimately cost him the fight on the, the scorecards, even though most of us think he was winning. I mean, his performances, the Juan Manu Marquez performance, I mean, they've all just been bad. You know, Pacquiao has cemented his future as, as, as an amazing fighter, and maybe he has stepped off the gas and lost his killer instinct, but... And, and let his political persona take over, but you know, it's 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 failed to impress me. You know, I mean, you need to, you need to have as much killer instinct in politics as you do in boxing, because you know you can get eaten alive in politics too, even if it is in the Philippines. But but let's see a good competitive Manny Pacquiao that only have to worry about fighting, and then maybe we'll we'll see something that somebody wants to see. Well, let me ask you one quick question, and I I gotta go. But, um, you know, I love Freddie Roach, uh, and, and you knew this was coming because we talked about it last night, but I, I, I love Freddie Roach. I think he's, he's, a, he's a great trainer. He's done so well. Um, 
Yes, he's battling a disease. We all know it. It's 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 right in front of us. It's put right in front of the cameras, which I don't like, but still. But you know what, Amy? If you look at his fighters, there's been a, a, a classic uh, trend here. You know, Manny Pacquiao's decline. Amir Khan, you know, losing uh, his fight with Lamont Peterson, then ultimately getting knocked out with Danny Garcia. Latif Coyote uh, having a subpar performance uh, against... Uh, uh, Antonio Tarver, and then ultimately losing his mind last week and, and punching uh, another trainer in the head. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. deciding that he doesn't want to train. Is Freddie losing his grip on these guys? I mean, it just seems that there's uh, it's a free-for-all at, at, at Freddie's helm. And, and to add, to make matters worse, in my opinion, he hasn't been too instructional in between rounds for any of those fighters I just mentioned. Whereas he used to, you know, used to listen to him give... Uh, you know, uh, correct construction and adjustments in the corner, and he's just failing to do so. What's up? You know, like I, like I think I have said to you before, Freddie Rush is a trainer, and he's not a magician. And he's also extremely human, as, as, is, as is evident with the Battle of Parkinson, which he feels like shouldn't be the focus on his life, but you, you, you can't ignore it. He cannot physically make Chavez Jr. come in to fight and train and work. You know, there, there's really just so much you can do, but I think eventually, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've had close family members with Parkinson's, and I've seen the way it works in my father and my grandfather, and it's kind of a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a decline that can. Stay steady. It can be, or it can, it can be, um, it can be halted a little with proper medication and the tremendous amount of physical activity Freddie engages in. Those are a couple of things that can hit Parkinson's off at the pass, but you can't stop it. And it's, it's going to eventually maybe have some toll on his work as a trainer because you, you, you have to concentrate on yourself. To be well in mind and body, and Parkinson takes a lot. Of, Parkinson takes a lot out of you. Um, but then, by that same token, I'm going to say what's going on with him. As much as he, as valiantly as he battles to keep that not so evident in his life, I, I don't know if that's what's taking a toll, or if it's just he's done all he can do with these fighters. They're at a limit where nobody else could take them any further. You know, um, Manny Pacquiao's been a work in progress. He's not a natural-born talent like Floyd Mayweather. Chavez Jr., you know, certainly has the gene pool for it, but he's got a spoiled rich kid mentality, and I don't care if Freddie Parkinson, if, if Freddie didn't have Parkinson, he can do nothing about that. You know, he, he's not a babysitter, but, you know, there's, there's, there's some signs that maybe he's losing a little bit of a grasp, but then you're working with a mixed bag of people here, too, so I'm going to say it's going to be six of one, half a dozen of the other, whether it's, you know, finally... His faculties are failing him, and it's harder and harder for him to train. Or all of a sudden, you just pull up with people that really aren't worth a damn. I don't know, man, but uh, it's uh, it's it's definitely it's a battle. It, yeah. It's a real battle. But like I said, you know, it, he, it, there, there's nobody that controls Chavez Jr. If he wants to come into, you know, your your middleweight fight as the cruiserweight with a DUI and you know, I, what, what what can Freddie Roach do to prevent that? He's, like I said, he's not a babysitter. He's not a magician. He's a trainer. You know, your trainer and your fighter work together yeah. to come up with hopefully a good result. And you can't do it all by himself. You've got to have someone in there with you, you know, your fighter that wants to win something and, and take it seriously or your work is for not, no matter your health or what. And, you know, you, you take your foot off the gas against uh, somebody like Sergio Martinez and your, your history. No, you're, you're he can right. He can change the fight on the time. He can change the fight on a dime. You know, you can be sitting there watching him and you're thinking, you know, Martinez, you know, he's not doing anything. He's got a busted nose. He's lackluster. And all of a sudden, bam, oh, boy, he's out on, he's out on his ass in front of you. So, so, you know, Sergio Martinez is something that, you don't take off four days training. You know, you just, you just don't do it. I don't know what Chavez Jr.'s. 
I don't know what Chavez Jr.'s problem is, but he needs to correct it. And you know, maybe Fred needs to slap him around like he did Johnny Tapia. You know, you know what? So, we we gotta we gotta go. I, I I'm sitting here uh, looking at the chat room and and listening to you and and agreeing with you. And also, not, we gotta go. But I I I think I think Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. needs to do one thing. He needs to go check out Ruth Buzzy because that's what he needs to do. <laughs> he needs to what? Check out Ruth Buzzy. <laughs> yeah. Well, good luck with all that. Amy, I think Ruth Buzzy at this point takes him. Amy, until next time, man, thanks for all your input. All right. Have a great rest of the day. All right, man. Take care. That's Amy Green giving us uh, her women's boxing report. And, by the way, that's an inside joke between Amy and myself. Wake up, it's time for the It's Too Early for a Trivia Question. Question. Today's It's Too Early for a Trivia Question. Question is being brought to us by Gleason's Gym. Give them a call today. Uh, you can, Or you could just visit our website, www.billycboxing.com. Click the Gleason's Gym banner or call them directly, 718-797-2872. Tell them Billy C sent you. On the line is the Evanda Holyfield Way, written by uh, James Thomas, uh, and uh, it's one of my favorite books. It's courtesy of prizefightingbooks.com, and it goes to the first person who knows who Noah Brusco, Brusso is. Noah Brusso. Who is Noah Brusso? If you know who Noah Brusso is, email me, Billy, at Talkin' Boxing. That's T-A-L-K-I-N, B-O-X-I-N-G, dot com. This day in boxing history. Boxing uh-huh. history. And finally, this day in boxing history is being brought to us by Kemp and Aaron Tomkovich. If you're looking for a lawyer, use the ones that keep my ass out of trouble, and that is Kemp and Aaron Tomkovich. Give them a call today, 845-221-4099. Let Kemp and Aaron Tomkovich knock out your legal problem. 845-221-4099. On this day, August 14th in 1922, Dave Rosenberg wins a 15-round decision over Phil King to win the vacant New York World Middleweight title, and that took place on this day, August 14th in 1922, in the Bronx, New York. Hey, man, that concludes our show for today. I got one more thing to say. Make sure you tune in tomorrow morning, same bat time. Same bat channel. There's only one channel, the Fight Now channel. Call your local television provider right now and tell them you want the Fight Now channel added to your sports channel lineup. It's that simple. Pick up the phone and call them for all the information about the channel. You can find it at their website, www.fightnow.com. See you all tomorrow. Ciao, baby. <laughs>